Hey accounting scholars, welcome back to chapter 11. Hey, this is going to be a break in the traditional accounting approach that we've been using the last several chapters where we've been mostly focusing on things that are currently happening uh, or things that have happened in the last 12 months. This chapter we're really going to expand the time horizon to uh, two years, three years, four years, sometimes even five years because this chapter is all about investing and financing activities and it is primarily focused on the future as opposed to the present or the past. Financing and investing activities typically are long-term in nature. So when we are looking at uh, investment opportunities that have a longer-term horizon, we must consider the time value of money. Uh, and simply put, the time value of money is a dollar today uh, isn't necessarily uh, worth, a month, worth as much as a dollar in the future unless you get an acceptable rate of return. So we're going to be looking at concepts of uh, compound interest. We're going to be looking at risk-reward relationships. Um, and we're going to tie those directly back to the time value of money. So let's, uh, let's get started. Let's get started. So we have to do some definitional things here. One is, uh, what is the difference between the return of an investment versus the return on an investment? So the particular uh, difference here, when you talk about the return of investment, you're talking about the, uh, the return of the initial amount invested. So if you invested uh, $1,000, uh, you know, the return of investment is uh, uh, when would you get that return back? the return of the initial investment. When you talk about the return on investment, you're specifically talking about addition, the additional amount of return um, either in excess of the amount invested or sometimes if things aren't good, um, less than the amount invested. So, but you're, you know, hopefully you're going to get um, uh, make additional money on your investment so the excess would be the return on investment so the um, uh, factor here that you want to focus on is when do you get your return of investment which back invest again a thousand dollars when do you get that a thousand dollars back and return on investment is, hey, I invested $1,000, but I actually made $1,500 on that investment. So the excess would be $500. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about risk. Well, risk is all about the chance of an unfavorable outcome. You know, you invest... Uh, thousand dollars in the stock market and your company you invested goes belly up you know makes a call to Peter Francis Tracy um, there, that was uh, there was a risk there when you invested in that company and so there was a chance of an unfavorable outcome and unfortunately you experienced that so again the definition of a risk and make sure you get those in your notes is a chance of an unfavorable outcome then you have inflation risk, um, and inflation is all about price levels, so you have a risk of changing price levels. Um, a third risk you might have is business risk, um, and the risk here is that a particular company will not remain in business. Um, 
they'll become a client of Peter Francis Geraci. Then you have liquidity risk. Liquidity risk is the risk that the investment cannot be converted to cash when desired. Uh, you know, sometimes you need um, you need funds to run your business, and if you have your cash tied up in a particular asset that can't be turned into uh, cash quickly, um, you could have a problem. You could have a problem. And then um, uh, we move on to how are risk and return related? Well, specifically, risk and return are related to a couple factors. Uh, the first is the expected rate of return. And specifically, the expected rate of return is something that you would estimate before the fact, um, and it will be something that um, you would use to gauge what your return on investment would be. Then you have a risk premium. Um, so you would take the expected rate of return and you'd say, okay, um, I would expect a 10% return here, but then I've got some other factors to consider. Um, I've got to consider inflation. I've got to consider business risk. I've got to consider liquidity risk. So I might add a risk premium on the expected rate of return. Uh, you know, let's say, uh, for example, you, on an investment, you expected a 20% return normally. If you added the risk premium for uh, inflation, uh, the risk premium for business risk, and the risk premium for um, liquidity risk, you might add another 10 points on it and say, I need to get 30% back to account for the risk premium. So, you know, in general, the higher the risk, or the greater the risk, the higher the, ex you know, the expected rate of return. Okay, um, now let's start talking about some of the math involved in this. Uh, this will be a review for most of you, but just to kind of get a common, common definitional background, um, let's talk about simple versus compound interest. Simple interest is, uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's the interest that is calculated on the amount of principal, uh, that's the uh, amount of a loan or, or the amount of, uh, uh, that you invest, uh, it's only on the principal and the calculation is interest equals principal times rate times time. That would be for period one. For period two, same calculation. Interest equals principal times rate times time. So that is the interest calculation on simple interest. So what about compound? Compound interest says, hey, what we're going to do is we're not only going to account for the traditional simple interest, but we're going to add the interest we earned from period one to the, uh, uh, to the principal and then we're going to do the same calculation rate times time and that's exactly what we are showing here. Uh, interest uh, equals principal times rate times time. It's the same calculation as a simple interest calculation in period one. However, in period two, you take the interest earned from period one, add that to principal, and then you multiply that times rate times time. Okay, guys, we're going to uh, end this particular section. Uh, we're going to have a couple of short quiz tomorrow morning. So um, have a have a great uh, have a great evening. Take care.